the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, they said the same message. John was a little different. Matthew chapter 27, starting at verse 15. Now at that feast, the governor was wont to release unto the people a prisoner whom they would. And they had a noble prisoner called Barabbas. Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, Whom will you that I release unto you, Barabbas or Jesus, which is called Christ? For he knew that, that for envy they had delivered him. When he was set down on the judgment seat, his wife said unto him, saying, Have thou nothing to do with that just man? For I have suffered many things in the day in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor answered and said unto them, Whether of the twain were ye that I released unto you? They said, Barabbas. Pilate said unto them, Who shall then do with Jesus, which is called the Christ? They all said unto him, Let him be crucified. And the governor said, Why, what evil hath he done? But cried out the more, saying, Let him be crucified. I got and when Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but that rather at tumult, the turmoil was made, he took water and washed his hand before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this person. Right. See ye to it. Then asked all the people and said, His blood be on us and our children, my Lord. Then released he Barabbas unto them, and he had scourged Jesus. He delivered him to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall, gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our Lord shall stand forever. Um, I will be using for a subject this morning. Suddenly it happens. All right. Suddenly, it happens. There are a couple people in the Bible who had something good happen to them suddenly. They are probably familiar to you. Uh, we have a name for one, but not the name for the other. We, but we do know this. They were both criminals. Two guys who had lived hard and rough lives. But they both got something that they did not deserve. Mm -hmm. And it came unto them suddenly. As we look at these two men, I want you to be thinking suddenly. I want you to think about who they were and what they received. And I want you to understand that what was done for them has also been done for you. Amen. It's also been done for you. And what they received, despite who they were, is what we all have the opportunity to see, despite who we are. Let's look at the first guy. We find him in the scripture passage we just read, Matthew. Barabbas. The Bible tells us he was a notorious criminal. He was actually a terrorist. And he had tried to start an insurrection against the Roman occupiers. He was not what we call a very good man. He was just sitting in a jail cell waiting to be executed. And when the soldiers came for him, he probably said, This is it. I'm going to die. My life as I know it as an insurrectionist criminal is about to come to an end. My life is over. Mm -hmm. But the soldiers came to him and let him go. Mm -hmm. Just like that. Mm -hmm. One minute he's waiting to die, and then the next minute he is set free. Mm -hmm. Why was he set free? Because another took his place. And who took his place but the man Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yes. Christ Jesus took the place of an insurrectionist criminal called Barabbas. So Barabbas is the first guy to receive something suddenly wonderful out of the blue. Mm -hmm. Then there's another guy we read in Luke chapter 23. Go to Luke chapter 23 with me, starting at verse 40. Luke 23. Starting at verse 40. Amen. Luke chapter 23. I'm going to read 
starting at verse 40. But the other answering rebuke him, saying, Does not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. Right. But this man hath done nothing amiss. Uh -huh. And he said unto him, Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto you this day, yes. thou shalt be with me in paradise. Yes, sir. Amen, amen. That's some good news right there. Suddenly. You will be with me in paradise. The second guy is on a cross hanging beside Jesus. The Bible does not tell us his name, but we do know something about him. He was a criminal. He was a thief. And by his own admission, he's getting just due. He deserves to die on that cross. Yes. He deserves to die for all the crimes he had committed. But, and I love that conjunction, but, he believed Jesus didn't deserve to die. Yes. He knows that Jesus is not a criminal. In fact, he believes Jesus has a kingdom. And he has faith that Jesus has the power to remember him after death. How many of oh God has the power to remember you after death? Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. How many of know this yes. earth is not your home? Yes. How many know we have blessed assurance yes. Jesus is mine? Yes. Oh, what a foretaste yes. of glory divine. Yes. How many know that to be absent from this body, you have a promise to be with the presence of God? That Jesus can deliver him from what he deserves to where Jesus is going. And Jesus tells this thief, Come on. your works. That's right. Your works. All right. The things you've done are going to get you saved. All right. Come on now. Because you read the Bible every day. Uh oh. Uh, because you prayed every day. Yes, because you're out there witnessing every day. That's going to get you saved. What? No, Jesus said, by your faith. You will be rewarded. Amen. Now let me be clear. I pray every day. I read my Bible every day. I worship the Lord every day. I do that because I am saved. Yeah. Not to be saved. Because the Bible says my works are as a filthy rag before a holy God. And we thank Jesus for the, that he paid the price. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin has cast a what? Crimson stain. But how many know he's washed you white as snow? Who here has been washed white as snow by what our Lord and Savior has done? So here we have, Pastor Clark, two criminals. Yes, sir. They deserve to die. Preach it like you feel it. And out of the blue, suddenly, they have been given a gift. All they deserved was death. They were both common criminals. They were going to get what they rightfully deserved. But in both cases, they were spared. Yes. Amen. I mean, thank God that he spared you. Amen. Some of us got just enough sin that we should have a highway to hell. Amen, somebody. And I'll be right there with you in a Lamborghini going 100 miles per hour because I've done enough sinning in my life to deserve to be on the highway to hell. But, but Jesus, he spared them. And how many know Jesus has spared you today? Jesus has spared you today. Don't never let the devil bring condemnation upon you. If you are in Christ Jesus, you are a new creature. All things have passed away. Hallelujah. We thank the Lord that I have a new life. So here's what we can relate. We all know who we are. Like they say, you may fool me sometimes, but you don't fool God none of the time. We may be able to put on a good face. I may come to church dressed up looking really good, but in our hearts, who can know it but God? 
God knows your heart. No matter how good you think, He said none is good but God. And deep down, we understand that we don't deserve anything from God. But like the terrorist insurrectionist and like the thief, Jesus came to our rescue. How many of y'all thank God that He came to your rescue this day? You didn't deserve to wake up this morning. Because we said, the, the statistics say every two seconds, somebody is leaving this earth. Yeah. Pastor Clark, somebody just left just like that. Just like that. Somebody left just like that. Yes. But God has given you another chance to get it right. And if God has given you another chance, give the Lord a hand and praise that he woke me up this morning. Start me. How many of y'all thank God for a right mind? Yes, Lord. Thank God for a right mind. Folks right here are on so many psychotropic medications and they want drugs and alcohol, everything to escape from this mind, but they are to be ye transformed. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. You can drink that alcohol, but the next morning, I'm still here, trouble. You can smoke that joint, but I'm still here, trouble. You may got two But I know somebody who can deliver you from your mind. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Hallelujah, somebody. Thank God for a sane mind. Thank God I don't have no medication for my mind. Now, I'm not knocking folks who may need some medication, but I know the medication God has given me is the Bible and the Word of God. So when you meditate on His Word day and night, you got to fill your spirit, man. Too many people want to worry about the outer shell. Yes, sir. See, the outer shell is passing away. How many know you were born to die?
treason. He had a rebellion against the law. But Jesus came to be his substitute, and Barabbas was suddenly set free. Yes, Hallelujah, yes, somebody. Yes, yes, yes. Jesus came to be your substitute, and suddenly you have been set free. Yes. If God has set you free, won't you give the Lord a hand of praise? Yes. We are last. We are last. Thank God Almighty. Thank God Almighty. I'm free at last. With the devil meant for harm, God meant for my good. Pick me up. Turn me around. Lace my feet. For a solid ground. Place the solid rock I stand. All other ground is. Because of Jesus, yes, the thief didn't get what he deserved. Yes, By his own admission, he was a criminal. Yes, sir. He deserved to die and to be separated from God forever. Yes. But Jesus promised him paradise. Yes. We don't deserve anything like that either. Yes. We may be better than some other people, but we still know who we really are. Oh. We don't deserve forgiveness. Yes. We don't deserve a new life to live. But Jesus, Jesus, but Jesus paid it all. He died, didn't he die? He died, didn't he die? But early one Sunday morning, he got up from all power. Yes, Lord, thank you, God. All power. Yes, sir. In His hand. He died on the cross so we can start over and start living new life for him. That's mercy. Now let's look at the second word. Grace. Hallelujah. Thank God for the grace of God. And here's the working definition for grace. It's getting what you what you don't deserve. How many know you don't deserve to have these good clothes on? You don't deserve to drive a good car. You don't deserve to have food on your table, shoes on your feet. Hallelujah, somebody. You don't deserve, I don't care how much think you work, how many hours on the job, we don't deserve the sun shining down on me. I don't deserve to wake up this morning. But God, but God, but Robert didn't deserve freedom. He didn't deserve to be released from his sentence. But Jesus made it possible for Barabbas to get what he didn't deserve. The thief didn't deserve to be in heaven, but Jesus gave him something he don't deserve. Hallelujah. He didn't deserve to go to heaven to be with the Lord in paradise. But Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin has cast things. Whiter than snow. Yes, Lord. Jesus gave that thief what he didn't deserve, yes. and that was heaven. Thank you, Father. We don't deserve God's best. We don't deserve Jesus taking on our sins by himself. We don't deserve having Jesus to die in our place. We really don't deserve any good thing from God. We certainly haven't earned it. Hallelujah, somebody. But Jesus poured out his grace upon us. He died for our sins so that you and I don't have to die a second death. Hallelujah. We don't have to die a second death. He took our place so we wouldn't have to pay for our own sins. Thank you, Thank you, Lord. Yeah. That's called grace. grace. That's Thank called you. grace. grace. Your grace yeah. and your mercy yeah. has yeah. kept me, yeah. has brought me through. So yeah. now I'm living a new yeah. life. I thank the Lord for his grace yeah. and his mercy. Yeah. Because if he gave me what I deserve, I would not be preaching from his pulpit. Hallelujah, Thank somebody. You, thank you, Lord. Thank and the you. next word is Hallelujah. life. Thank you, Father. How many of y'all thank God you thank have a new life? 
I had a new life. Thank you, How many know Jesus is alive? Yes. Jesus is alive. You, if I'm doing all this and he's not allowed, it's my living in vain. Yes. He's real. He's real. He's done so much in my life, I know he's real. He's real. He did go to the cross. Yes. He did hang on that tree. Yes. He did die for our sins. Yes. He extended unearned mercy and grace. Yes. But death was not the end. Hallelujah, somebody. Yes. Death was not the end. Because the Bible says three days later, he got up yes. with all power in his hand. Hallelujah. And mercy, mercy, grace, grace. and life. And life. Jesus Woo! conquered death. Yes, he did. And he proved that he is in total control. Total control. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yeah. There was this man. Two men. They had to catch a plane. And another guy saw them in the airport like, where are you flying? He said, we got to get from Anguish the last one back to the state so. And the guy said, I can fly y'all on my personal plane. If y'all want to go, let me wait for your commercial plane. And then looked at each other. He said, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a pilot. I'm certified. I have my own plane. I'll fly you. Y'all let y'all want to wait. The two men said, We'll go with you. Okay. Fly us. So the two men in the airport wait. So they Get to the plane. They look the plane over. It's okay. This is a nice little commuter plane. You can get us from Anchorage back to the States. Okay. So they start flying. And they get up in the air. And they get into the clouds. Then the pilot says, I didn't want to go this high. Because every time I fly in the clouds, I get this. And I lose. And I pass out. <laughs> so they passed out. <clears throat> So the two men looked at each other. This is it. We're going to die. I don't know how to fly a plane. They shook the pilot. He was not responding. So they said, we need help. So they grabbed the radio without understanding pilot, no large jargon. They just said, help. The pilot has passed out. Then somebody came in the radio like, what's going on? They said, the pilot just passed out and we're flying and I don't know how to land this plane. Then the man across said, listen to my voice. Listen to my voice. So the man began to give them instructions. Listen to my voice. And as they listened to their voice, they began to follow the pilot, the man's instructions. But on their way, word had got out that this plane was stuck in the air. So everybody started jumping on air. You good? You gonna land? You? So all these voices start coming over the plane. Then that one voice says, stay focused on my voice. Stay focused on my voice. And they focused in on his voice and he landed those men at an airport. Hallelujah, somebody. He landed those men at an airport because they listened to the voice. And how many know you must understand, that's why I told Mr. Grant, confirmation. You must, my sheep, my sheep know my voice. And many of us have so many voices in our head, but you must understand that you must be tuned in to the voice of God. And how many know God says, when you're tuned into my voice, yes, sir. The road may be rough. Yeah. The going may be tough. And the hills may be uh, hard to climb. Yeah. But I started out Come on, man. a long time ago. No there is no doubt in my mind. I decided to make Jesus my choice. Who here decides to make God your choice? Amen. Amen. Listen to the voice of God. And I'm done. Many folks want to hear 
when the next prophet is coming to town. Amen. Amen. Maybe he or she has a word for me. Now I know how you hear God's voice every single day. Open up his word. Open up these 66 books yeah. called the gospel of Jesus Christ and God will direct your path. Yes. Mr. Branch, yes. there was a time I directed my own path. I wanted to do things the way I wanted to do things. I wanted to put God in my box. But let me know God is either one way or no way. You cannot stand in the middle ground. There is no gray area in God. You're either with God or you're against God. And I will not stand and give account to your blood if you say, I'm going to live my life the way I want to live because as sure as my name is David Anthony Thornton, it won't be my fault that you stand before God and says, depart from me. You worker of iniquity, I know you not. And you'll say, didn't I sing on the choir? Didn't I go to church? Didn't I, didn't I? He'll say, I never knew you. So I'm commissioned to teach and preach the true gospel of Jesus Christ. How many of God still saves? How many of God still saves? The day he said, Hard not your heart when you hear my voice. Today is the day, the given time, that you give your life back to the Lord. You've gone astray. How many of us have gone astray? Yes, Lord. But life has a way of beating you down and coming back. Come back to Jesus. And then suddenly, he will put your life on the right track. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Amen. 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 Amen.